Okay, before implementing authentication or any other stuff, of course, we need an HTTP client instance that's ready for us to inject within any component or C Sharp service. So basically, we can make calls for our API. By default, the Blazor template initialize this or register this instance of HTTP client for us, but actually this doesn't work in our case because the base address is the same address for our client application, which doesn't have an API, so somehow it's useless. Now, we can change this one to make it accept the our API, but that's good and not good at the same time because we need somehow to have a more efficient way to manage our HTTP client instances because Maybe in this course, we are going to implement Microsoft Graph, so we will need multiple instances. This is number one. Number two, uh, if we try to simply, we need the HTTP client to do some automatic stuff for us. Like every time we send a request to go ahead to the local storage, fetch the access token, set it in the header and send it without the need to do this by, by ourselves every time. And to do this, we need to use something called messages handler and or message handlers and those basically we can attach a message handler to an HTTP client to the request before it goes it goes through all the message handlers available or attach it for this one and simply set it and every message handler is going to do something in our case in our project we will have only one message handler that's going to set the access token in the header of the request so to be able to set a message handler we have to basically use this one services.add HTTP client method to, re to register an HTTP client service or at least to initialize one and then we are going to register it in the dependency injection container through HTTP client factory service but this one is not available for us directly we have to go to the dependencies uh, manage new packages and search for system.extensions.http so okay not found X then shans yeah like this so this one make sure to install it okay so let's close this one so right now it's available for us so to set that instance we can give it a name let's give it a name So this is it. What the IHTTP client does is actually it registers IHTTP client factory, which is through it we can register the HTTP client instance within the uh, within the this injection container. So client, this is an HTTP client instance. So here we can configure that, and the only thing that we should do is set the base address, new URI, and this new URI is just our base address of our API, which is planner app dash API dot Azure websites dot net, just like this. That's a pretty simple. Now to attach a message handler, we can just say add message handler. But before doing this, let's create this, that message handler. To create that, I will, I will give it the name authorization message handler. So the message handler should inherit from the abstract or not the abstract class sorry it's a delegating handler this one you should inherit from this one then here the request if you attach this message handler into this HTTP client through dot add message handler like this authorization message handler so right now every time you send any request get post but uh, delete whatever it is it's going to go through this one and call one of those send async or send if it's uh, not synchronous so but of course we would like to use this one which is uh, asynchronous so let's override its implementation let's add async here so every time we send any request automatically by default it's going to go through this function and this is the request we can manipulate it the way we want and our manipulation is just going to be uh, simply retrieve the access token from the local storage in case it is there and set it in the header. That's it. So to do this, we need to register the service or inject the service uh, read only i local storage 
service. Okay, let's call it storage. I local the storage service, storage, storage like that. So that's good. And yeah, I forgot that we didn't register this one. Add blazard local storage like this. We have to register it. Okay, that's good. So now let's make. Let's check first in the local storage. Is there any access token? And we are going to do this through uh, uh, contains key async. We we'll call the key access token. So in case it is there, then okay, that's good. Just go ahead and. Uh, uh, bring it and put it in the header so let's bring it token await storage dot get item as string async and the key called access token and set it in the header request dot headers dot authorization equals new barrier this is the scheme and then the parameter of the token and that's it very simple the last step is simply return uh, await send base dot send async so send the request and return the response back because this accepts or the http response is a response message now we take the request which is the request it comes and the cancellation token and that's it this is pretty simple so this is the default behavior that already exists and this is what we just added in case there is an access token set it in the header so this process right now is going to happen automatically we will never worry about doing it again across the system. So authorization messaging message handlers are a very important and a great concept. Um, another example that you can every time you can bring the uh, for example the current time zone of the customer and send it in, in case your API like predict that there is going to be a um, uh, time zone available out there. So if maybe in some requests you are going to forget this. So this is one of them of the benefits of message message handlers and another one like you write the code only one time and it's centralized over here whenever you want to make any change you just make it in one place you don't need to go across all your components to search where you are sending a request to, to make that change so that's good i hope you got the idea behind this so let's click on this one move to a file so let's have that file over here and that's a great this is all what we need but the last step is this one initialize this client but right now it's not registered yet within the dependency injection container and to do so we are going to use add scope i will not directly uh, inject something i will use service provider service provider dot get service one of the services that's already registered which is ihttp client factory ihttp client factory so this HTTP client factory is basically a service that's registered by the HTTP client that's responsible to create instances of HTTP client that are registered here. And it has a function called the create client and it takes a name. So what is the name of that instance? I will call it the planner app dot API, which is this instance that had the space address and had the authorization message handler as a messaging handler. That's good. This is all all what you need let's test to make sure that this one is working fine so i will here for example i will set a console con sol dot right line um, authorization message handler message handler called just this symbol sample and already in fetch data we already have http client instance injected over here so look at this we are not doing basically any token we are not doing all the stuff we are just calling get from json which is the default behavior but if i run the project right now if i navigate to this page we are going to see that this function will be called and the in the console uh, window we will see that authorization message handler called automatically because 
every request should go through all the attached or associated message handlers. And uh, wait a little bit. Cool, let's try to go for fetch data. Okay, we got an error. Let's see what we have. No service or type authorization message handler. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We have also actually this authorization message handler has to be registered. So let's see services. I will use at transient here and we have to register it just like this. I forgot this step. That's good. Normal. Fine. Basically, we should ac accept also like uh, 404 not found and the reason why is because uh, we changed the base address so it will try to fetch data from a source that's not exist but we don't care about this if I click F12 yeah that's fine that's ex expected you see 404 but forget about this this after the request send it trying to find nothing but before you can see that authorization message handler called automatically without calling it this is the responsibility of this one so right now you should learn something new, which is if you want to manipulate the HTTP request before it goes to the server automatically without your uh, without writing code for this, you can use those authorization message handler. And this is the way that you can, uh, the simple way to, to do it. And then you can register that HTTP client instance through using get service, IHTTP client factory, create that client, and it's registered through the ads code, then it's available for the components. So that's good and great. The last thing that we still have to do is to implement a JWT authentication state provider that's going to know if the user is logged in or not and to provide that uh, data or that uh, uh, identity across all the components. So in the next step, this is what you are going to implement. So thank you so much for watching and see you.